there everybody, it's Frances Boyle here in my home office in Ottawa. I am absolutely delighted to be part of the Dead Poets reading series and thank you so much to Isabella and everyone involved for opening it up uh, to the online world uh, for many of us to share writing by uh, poets who, who we love. Uh, I'm going to read a few poems from the American poet uh, Jane Kenyon who died not quite uh, 25 years ago in 1995. Uh, she's a poet whose work is described as spare and emotionally resonant. But one important thing um, about, that I find about her is that she, um, she writes fairly um, uncompromisingly about uh, the depression that she dealt with for, for much of her life. And I think it's um, important to acknowledge that uh, that is a reality for many of us, and that these dark times are uh, increasingly difficult. Um, her poetry is uh, straightforward, um, uh, frank, but not without hope. So I'm going to read uh, some poems both from the, uh, the darker and lighter side of, of Jane Kenyon. Uh, the first one is called Now Where? It wakes when I wake, walks when I walk, turns back when I turn back, beating me to the door. It spoils my food and steals my sleep and mocks me, saying, where is your God now? And so, like a widow, I lie down after supper. If I lie down or sit up, it's all the same. The days and nights bear me along. To strangers I must seem alive. Spring comes, summer, cool, clear weather, heat, rain. This poem is called Otherwise. I got out of bed on two strong legs. It might have been otherwise. I ate cereal, sweet milk, ripe, flawless, it might have been otherwise. I took the dog uphill to the birch wood. All morning I did the work I loved. At noon I lay down with my mate. It might have been otherwise. We ate dinner together at a table with silver candlesticks. It might have been otherwise. I slept in a bed in a room with paintings on the wall and planned another day just like this day. But one day, I know, it will be otherwise. The title of this poem is Let Evening Come. Let the light of late afternoon shine through chinks in the barn, moving up the bales as the sun moves down. Let the cricket take up chafing as a woman takes up her needles and her yarn. Let evening come. Let dew collect on the hoe abandoned in long grass. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. Let the fox go back to its sandy den. Let the wind die down. Let the shed go black inside. Let evening come. To the bottle in the ditch, to the scoop in the oats, to air in the lung, let evening come. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless, so let evening come. And the last poem is called Happiness. There's just no accounting for happiness, or the way it turns up like a prodigal who comes back to the dust at your feet, having squandered a fortune far away. And how could you not forgive? You make a feast in honor of what was lost and take from its place the finest garment, which you saved for an occasion you could not imagine. And you weep night and day to know that you were not abandoned, that happiness saved its most extreme form for you alone. No, happiness is the uncle you never knew about who flies a single engine plane onto the grassy landing strip, 
hitchhikes into town and inquires at every door until he finds you asleep mid-afternoon, as you so often are during the unmerciful hours of your despair. It comes to the monk in his cell. It comes to the woman sweeping the street with a birch broom, to the child whose mother has passed out from drink. It comes to the lover, to the dog chewing a sock, to the pusher, to the basket maker, and to the clerk stacking cans of carrots in the night. It comes even to the boulder in the perpetual shade of pine barrens, to rain falling on the open sea, to the wine glass, weary of wine. So that's a taste of Jane Kenyon. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you again to Isabella and the Dead Poets Reading Series. Please, everyone, be well. Thank you.